Hello, Hey everyone, it's Sir Ant in China. How y'all doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. I'm here at work and I got some comments recently on one of my live streams. People asking me just how the job's going and what it is that I actually do here in this job. So I thought I'd share that with you today in a little video. But before we get into that, um, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and throw me a thumbs up if you like my content, because it really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm to help other people find my videos so I can share this content with more people. And on that note, if you're thinking of coming to China, or perhaps you're already in China, I wanted to share with you a fantastic VPN service that I'm using right now. It's called Simple Link. Not only is the price very good and the reliability excellent, it has server all over the world and a lot of different pricing options for any budget. The nice thing is for those of us that are already here in China, you can pay with WeChat and Alipay as well. So it's a really, really great service and I highly recommend it. And if you're interested in trying it, there's a link down in the description below. But for now, let's talk about work. Now, as I talked about in past videos, it's a little bit more difficult to find and get a job in China as opposed to back home. Back home, I can look for uh, opportunities online. I can go door to door, hand out resumes, and I can basically do the traditional method of searching for a job. If I get an interview, I can present myself, my qualifications and my skills. And if the employer is interested, we can simply shake hands and discuss when I can start. Over here in China, of course, it's quite a bit different. Um, the standard process of finding a job and interviewing is pretty much the same. However, past that, it gets trickier. Uh, as a foreigner in China, I do require a special visa and residence permit, and that does typically take approximately a month to do. And it involves things like health checks, um, visits to the police station, interviews, gathering up and collecting all the proper paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. Typically, the company that is hiring you will take care of all of those things for you or work with you or an agent in order to get all that information. But it can be a, a lot more harrowing than doing the same thing back home in Canada or America. But once all that process is said and done, then away you go. You can start your work career and uh, all is good. Now, if you're working as a standard teacher, the hours are, as you might expect, typically Monday to Friday, weekends off, summer vacations to a degree off, and all the national holidays. However, Working in a training center or a different type of educational facility may require that you work on every weekend and all the holidays as those are the busiest times for them and you might have days off during the week. So depending on the kind of person you are, if you're not much into partying and going out on the weekends with all your friends and prefer to have time off during the week to do your banking, shopping and things like that when it's less crowded, the training center might be more appealing. However, if you prefer having your weekends and holidays off, then a traditional school is the better choice. However, I don't work for either. I work for a standard Chinese and UK firm creates new energy products. So I follow the traditional Chinese employment practices of uh, working Monday to Friday, though a lot of my co-workers do work Saturday as well. That's quite common in uh, the Chinese manufacturing sector. I work from 8.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. with an hour and a half lunch. Almost all of my co-workers will actually eat lunch between 12 and 12.30. And then from 12.30 to 1.30, they will have a one-hour nap. This is very common. They actually bring fold-out beds or find areas uh, in the office that are dark and quiet where they can sleep. And from 12.30 to 1.30, all the off lights in the office do go out in order to facilitate people sleeping. So that is very, very common. I don't sleep myself, but I do have the time to myself, which I use for things like exercise and Chinese lessons. So I really do appreciate it. Now, it, if I didn't have that extra hour, I suppose I could leave earlier 
However, it, it wouldn't make sense as none of the people that I work with would be available during that time anyway. So, yeah, it's, it's a little different in that regard. Um, schools are also typically the same. However, training centers, not necessarily. Training centers often will have their classes in the evenings and weekends. So that, that hour and a half lunch is not guaranteed. It may just be a half hour. It may just be an hour. But uh, napping is not typically so prevalent in those type of situations. But here, I work from 8.30 till 6, which is okay by me. And it's not bad. One of the things that is a bit of a drag that I'm just going through this week is the Chinese holiday system. The holidays here are based on the lunar calendar. So every year, the holidays will appear on different days. And what the Chinese government likes to do is for certain holidays, for example, the National Day holiday, they like to give seven days of holiday. And for Spring Festival, they like to give 10. And this is so that people can travel or go back home to visit their families during that period. And it's kind of across the board. A lot of companies and places will literally shut down during those periods. However, this leads to problems. First and foremost, there are so many people traveling in the system on those days and, and uh, holidays that airports, train stations, highways, things like that can just be a zoo. And on top of that, the actual holiday may only be two days, three days, five days. So in order to make up those extra days on top of the weekends, there will be what are called makeup days. So for example, for this last holiday, the national day, there were only actually three days of paid leave, but we were given seven two of those days would be on the weekend, and then two of those days would need to be made up. So the way makeup days work is you will work typically one day before and one or two days after the holiday to make up for those unpaid days off. And in the situation I just experienced with the national holiday, the actual holiday was three days, but they gave two extra days in order to give people a full week with the weekend. So that meant on a Sunday before the holiday, we had to all come into work. And this is common in every Chinese company. And then following the holiday, we had to work an extra Saturday. So that meant that this week, I actually only had one day off. So I worked last week from Tuesday to Saturday, which was five regular days. And then Sunday was off. And then I had to go back Monday to Friday again. So there was actually a 10 day period, well, an 11 day period with only one day off, which I'm not a big fan of, but that's typically how these types of things work in China anyway. And there's nothing you can really do about it. It's a government regulation. That's just how it is. For employees that don't have um, annual leave, this means if they do want to do traveling or things of that nature, then those are the times they have to do it. And they just have to grin and bear it and go fight with the crowds to go see the things that they want to see. I'm a lot luckier in that I get two weeks of paid annual leave as well as the Chinese holidays. So I can take little trips whenever I want. I can just book a day off uh, or book two days off and create a long weekend for myself and go traveling, which is very nice. As for the job itself, as I mentioned, this is a new energy firm that creates batteries and battery storage solutions for uh, companies and residences using solar panels, using power from the grid, etc. It's very, very interesting and very, very technical, which leads to challenges since the manufacturing process is in China and the sales and marketing process is in the UK and different countries around the world where English is the primary language being spoken. This is tough because general English simply won't cut it when it comes to communication between the engineers and the marketing teams and the sales teams. Whereas the, the engineers learned English their entire lives going to school, they really didn't learn the technical English that they need to be able to communicate effectively. And therefore, they have a difficult time communicating with the teams in other countries. And that's where I come in. I act as a bit of a liaison. Um, I'm not a translator, nor am I a teacher. What I do is that I 
facilitate the communication between the two teams so that when the UK team is unclear of what is happening in China, I will step in and make that clear to them and vice versa. When the uh, UK team has uh, certain requirements or demands of the engineering team, I will make it clear to them what is required. The reason this works for me more so than a standard English teacher or a standard engineer is that I have experience in both worlds. So I can understand the very technical language and specifications of this industry and be able to make sure that both sides of the fence can understand each other. So it's, like I said, it's not a teaching job. It's not an engineering job. It's more of a liaison between these two teams, which is fantastic. It means that um, not only do I spend most of my time just speaking with people and talking, more casual sense than a typical teacher would. Um, I'm not teaching grammar and pronunciation and vocabulary and things like that. Instead, I'm making sure that people on both sides are understanding more clearly what they need to do and what the other side requires. So it's it's a lot of fun for me in particular because I am very technical. I do enjoy learning about this technology and because I have this strong manufacturing and technical uh, engineering background, for me it's very easy to understand the concepts and to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So this is a very unique opportunity. This is not something that uh, you would find very easily in China. In fact, I personally consider our bosses here to be very visionary, to even have somebody like me because my job is not 100% necessary. However, it is very, very, very helpful in facilitating the more rapid understanding between the two teams so that they can be more effective and efficient in their jobs, whether they're in marketing or in engineering. So yeah, I sit here in my little office and I uh, join meetings. I speak with the engineers on a daily basis to understand the issues and the concepts that they're working on. And then I work with the other team to make sure that they have full understanding of what's happening on this end so that everybody stresses less about communication and is able to function more effectively in their actual job roles because engineers don't major in English. That's that's just a fact. They're engineers. Technically, they're geniuses. My engineering team here is fantastic. However, to be able to explain things like transistors, diodes, inverters, etc., etc., in English is tough for them. So that's where I come in. I, I try to make this uh, a lot easier so that everybody has a better experience overall. So there you go. That's that's kind of my experience uh, working so far in China. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I didn't come to China looking for a job. I came to China to make YouTube videos and to retire, to relax. However, this opportunity came up through a friend and he introduced me to his friend who happened to be the owner of this company. And yeah, the, uh, things just kind of lined up. And had I been offered a, a typical teaching job in a school or training center, I probably would have said no, because I'm just not interested in that type of work at this time in my life. However, working with technical engineers to be able to learn all of these new products, these new exciting technologies, to me is it's fantastic. It's like candy. Um, I love it. I love to learn about the new technology. I love to look at schematics and uh, wiring diagrams and programming diagrams and programming. I think it's all fantastic. It's amazing. So I, I bug my boss all the time and tell him that uh, he found the right guy for the job and that he needs to give me more money. <laughs> But that's another story. I always tell your boss you need more money. Never tell your boss that you're paid enough. That's a, a rule of thumb for being successful in the work world. So yeah, however, the job has been a little different than I expected. I expected to be working in a pure factory type of environment, which I'm not. But I'll tell you more about that uh, in my next video where I talk about the differences between the expected job that I was getting working directly in the factory and in the hardcore manufacturing sector of this small factory village that I live in now 
as opposed to the office environment that I work in presently, which is quite a bit different and in a lot of ways quite a bit more uh, comfortable. But six of one, half a dozen the other. We'll talk about it in the next video. Thanks again for joining me today. And once again, I'm sorry I haven't been making videos as much. I've been kind of getting into the swing of the new job, but I will be making more videos in the future and sharing them with you. And if you have any ideas, I got this idea from one of my live streams. Please feel free to share in the comments and I'll look into it as much as I can. And by the way, I do plan on doing weekly live streams. I'm not sure if I'm going to do them yet on Saturday or Sunday, but either way, depending where you are in the world, it may be Friday night, it might be Saturday night. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, again, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below, and we will see you in the next video. Sai Chan.